You guys didn't win the cup in 2004, but you made the final against Tampa uh, and really should have won it. I, <laughs> you had a shot to win it in game six, thanks to uh, you setting up the game winner, uh, you know, against, uh, against Tampa in game five. Uh, and then uh, helmetless, no less, and what a great pass that <laughs> was. Uh, and then you almost, you know, you almost single-handedly led, led the Flames to the Cup that year. And of course, then, and you know, uh, you you weren't afraid to mix it up any time in your career. In the playoffs that year, you had to go with Hatcher, Darren Hatcher. Uh, you threw bone-crushing checks. You had the scrap with Vinny LeCavalier, and uh, that was a legendary tilt. For, you know, we're talking about the Stanley Cup finals here you don't see a lot of scraps in the stanley cup finals anymore but you're tilt with uh vinnie and and you know i mean you were you, you just basically said guys hop on my back we're going for a little ride here i'm going to do whatever it takes to lead us to the promised land include to you know take care of, of le cavalier um what was that uh you know what uh i mean i'm pretty sure that you you're the all-time leader in gordy howe hat tricks probably have more gordy howe hat tricks uh, then Gordy Howe had. Uh, by, by Gordy Howe had tracks of the game, of course, and a goal and assist and a fight in the game. In addition to those bone crunching hits he used to used to used to throw. What was that experience like two thousand four, despite the you know the fact you came up just short, even though that Martin Jelena goal was definitely in, you know, <laughs> as we saw in the replay. But, you know, as it turns out, you you you're 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 runner up in the Stanley Cup and uh Tell us about that run and the city of, of Calgary at that time and what was going on for you. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a it was an amazing run and it was. You know, I look back and obviously I would wish that goal would have counted and, and given us you know a few minutes to to go to win a Stanley Cup. Um, but at the same time, I'm very thankful that I got to go through that experience with the, the team there in in Calgary. It was, you know, it was we were one goal away from winning, but looking at it i got to see and i got to be part of a team that that came together that had so much fun together that you hear about the winning teams and and you know i got to do it at different ages and you know in cam loops and stuff but you, you know watching the nhl and hearing about it and and you know the camaraderie and getting to see it and getting to see different guys be heroes on different nights and um it, it was it was so it was really hard not winning it but it was awesome to go through it and and I think back to each series and the way, you know, we, we weren't expected, we were underdogs, but mm -hmm. all of our guys, uh, you know, if you go through it, uh, um, you know, late Steve Monitor, um, he scored a huge, huge goal against San, San Jose. What, a, what an awesome guy. And he was my roommate for a long time. And, you know, he scored an overtime winner and he was, you know, he was a D-man. He didn't score a ton of goals. And that was, uh, I remember that one, everyone jumping around. It was an OT winner in San Jose and we knocked those guys off. They were supposed to beat us. We beat, you know, first of all, before that, we got to uh, Vancouver. They were a huge, huge rival for us. And we beat them in seven. And if the series was back and forth. And, and uh, you know, it was right at the end of the game. We were up. I missed an em empty netter. Connie gave me a pass. And I missed the empty netter. They come down. <laughs> Five seconds later, there's barely any time left in the game. And they score. They're shorthanded. They go down and score a goal to tie it. It's like all the emotions. Uh, but fortunately, uh, we win jelly scores in overtime. He had scored three. That would have been four deciding if that one counted in the finals, four deciding. He scored every series clinching goal that we had. So three, but that would have been four. And I think he would have been the only player I would imagine in history uh, that have done that probably in any sport. The, the, that's like the, the deciding basket or something in basketball, you know? So um, yeah. it was, it was really, really special that, all the different guys that step up, how close we were as a team, how the guys embraced their roles, uh, Daryl coaching, um, you know, and, and he does a really good job of, of making all the players feel important and are important. And some play way more than other guys, but even the guys that play eight minutes, you know, they're, they buy into the role of it and, and uh, um, it doesn't mean they don't want to play more, but they know they're important. And he does a good job of making guys uh, fit in the roles, but also feel important. And other, and I think as a team, when you're that close, we were really, really close team. Sean Donovan, I remember, you know, Connie Jelly, it, the you know Kipper had an amazing playoffs, and you know Regier mm -hmm. was Brett Warner. There's so many neat guys that you become friends with, and you go through those battles with. But we were one goal, and at least I got to see and feel what it was like 
to be, you know, on a, on a, that type of team, a winning team that, that, uh, could win it all. And like I say, we're one goal from it. So got to do all the experiences, except we didn't get to, to raise it. And, and, and at the end of the day, uh, would have sure loved that, but it was, it was still as hard as it was not winning. I, I would go through it again because there were so many amazing, amazing experiences and ups and downs and so much fun.